Uh, I'm very happy, proud at the same time that our patients, because we should uh, recognize that this trial was designed in 92, that's 21 years ago, that we can f uh, finally present the results of this trial. Now, uh, it's on behalf of a lot of investigators and even many more patients, and we have no conflicts of interest to declare. What is this trial about? It is on uh, patients with breast cancer. And patients with breast cancer, we are all aware that we treat the breast, and most often that we also treat or examine the axilla. But apart from the axilla, there are other lymph nodes. And the lymph nodes that uh, we tested whether treatment with radiotherapy was of value is the internal memory lymph node, which is behind the breastbone, and the uh, lymph node area, which is just above the collarbone. So in fact, the part of the lymph nodes, which is not operated by the surgeon. From the past, and that's uh, from the 80s, we know that in patients who have no axillary node involvement, that the risk that there is involvement microscopically is low, is in general below uh, 10% for all patients together. Now for patients who have involvement of the axilla, the risk of involvement can be quite high, and this is variable. In between, yeah, a very wide range, 16 to 65%, but there are another fact, a lot of factors which can explain that, the size of the tumor, and also the position of the tumor. Because if the tumor is located centrally or at the inner side of the breast, the risk of involvement of the lymph nodes behind the breastbone is quite higher. This is uh, a display showing the lymph nodes that we examined. And in the lower uh, part, you can also see a patient with a recurrent tumor and a CT scan and an enlarged lymph node, which is in uh, practice rather uh, rare to, to find. The study was uh, designed to examine the value of irradiation to the internal memory nodes and the medial supraclavicular nodes in either patients who had involvement of, uh, of the axilla or patients without involvement of the axilla, but in that case the tumor should be located centrally in the, in the breast or at the medial side. The main endpoint was overall survival, because, as I mentioned earlier, the demonstrated involvement of those lymph nodes was mostly mi uh, microscopically and rarely detected uh, on a clinical level. Secondary endpoints were disease-free survival, metastasis-free survival, and the cause of death. Uh, the trial, designed in 92, only could open due to a lot of reasons in 96, and in a time span of seven and a half years, we accrued a total of 4,004 patients. This was a trial which was run in 13 countries by 46 institutions, and currently we have a median follow-up of 10.9 years. The maximum follow-up was nearly 16 years. The so survival status, which represents the primary endpoint of the trial, is as follows. Around 80% of the patients are still alive. There's a slight difference between the two groups. In the patients who were not irradiated to the lymph nodes behind the breastbone, and uh, around the collarbone had a 10-year survival of 78.6%, uh, while the patients who were irradiated to those lymph nodes have a survival of 80.9%. This is a small difference of 2.3% in uh, absolute number. We examined, of course, the cause of that, and what I highlighted with the rectangular bar is that only that due to breast cancer was decreased. There was no difference due uh, for uh, that due to other causes, other cancers, cardiovascular disease, toxicity, uh, other chronic disease, etc. So only breast cancer related deaths was decreased by irradiating those lymph nodes from 21.4% to 19, uh, sorry, from 
patients in the group of 2002 to 259 in the group of 2002. Looking to where the patients recurred, as expected, there was an influence on the regional recurrence rate in the lymph nodes. This was also, as expected, uh, rather small in the patients not irradiated to the lymph nodes. It was 4.2% in the patients irradiated to the lymph nodes, 27 I would like to remind you that once a patient develops metastasis, the lymph nodes are not really uh, examined anymore into detail. Local recurrence was exactly the same in both groups, 5.3, 5.6%, no difference. Uh, second breast cancer, also a difference even, but this is not a, a, a difference, slightly lower in the patients who were treated to the lymph nodes. But especially on distant metastasis, there was a clear difference, 19.6% without treating the lymph nodes to 15.9% for patients who have been treated on the irradiated on the lymph nodes. So concluding, primary endpoint overall survival at 10 years, irradiation to the lymph nodes behind the breastbone and around the collarbone, increased survival, actuarial survival at 10 years from 80.7% to 82.3%, uh, which is a reduction in the uh, death rate with 13%, hazard ratio 0 0.87. This is, in statistical terms, just not significant, 0 0.0556. But when adjusted for stratification factors, this is a technical term and a technical uh, issue, then it just become, uh, becomes statistically uh, significant. So it's just around the, uh, the level of uh, significance. Second endpoints, disease-free survival, metastasis-free survival, and cause of death, there all three were statistically different. Uh, in favor of irradiating the lymph nodes, Disease-free survival increased from 69.1 to 72.1 percent. Metastasis-free survival from 75 to 78. And for the cause of that, there was only one difference, and that is that patients treated to the lymph nodes had a lower risk of dying due to breast cancer. We have to thank a lot of people, especially the patients for sure, also the ERTC headquarters. We had the grant supporting uh, this trial, supporting the EORTC, and we had also a grant supporting the quality assurance, which has been run very roughly in the framework of this trial. And these are the uh, contributors.